you got your admission for a master's in the US and are now wondering what to do before you start your master's to make the most of it. Hey everyone, my name is Kajal and in this video I'll talk about the mindset and skills you should acquire during your break before you start your master's. I'll include the timing in the description below. So without further ado, let's get into it. to do your masters you might come with a mindset that okay I've got two years to learn something and then I can use those skills to get a job in my area of interest and trust me I came with that mindset as well unfortunately that's not how things work out the moment you come to the US and you start your masters you'll be looking for part-time job assistantship figuring out what courses to date, and even starting your internship search from day one. Even though you'll be doing your internship in the summer, which is nine months from now, you need to start your summer internship search from day one of your masters. Because different companies hire at different times. Some will be hiring nine months in advance, while some will be starting their search two months before the summer internship. This is why you will be spending your entire first two semesters looking for internship and also looking for part-time jobs including assistantship to support yourself during your master's studies. Plus, you'll also be studying and dealing with coursework as well as household work. So when you come to the US, keep that mindset in mind and there are some things you can do before you start your master's to make your life a little easier and optimize your education in the US. My number one advice is to do an internship. Do an internship in your home country before you start your master's in robotics. This is one of the best ways to get hands-on experience and learn. Plus, remember how I said, the moment you come into the US for your master's, from day one, you'll start your summer internship search. This internship will help you with the second internship search. You can add this to your resume and show that you have some experience in the field. Additionally, it will also tell you what to focus on when you're doing your master's in robotics. So if you have the time and the opportunity, do an internship in the summer before you start your master's. This is assuming that you're going to start your master's in the fall semester. If you're someone who's going to start your master's in the spring semesters and have a little bit more time, go for a longer internship. Now, as I mentioned, it will help you understand what to focus on. By this, I mean you need to figure out what subfield within robotics you're interested in before you start your master's in robotics. Ideally, during your master's, you should be able to explore different subfields and then pursue the one that you're interested in. Knowing the subfield you want to pursue in robotics gives you an advantage in your master's by focusing on the courses that you take or professors you work with to get the experience in your subfield. This will help you with your internship search, co-op search and full-time search. And then you can add all of these experiences in your resume and build your resume for the job you want. So this way you're building your resume with coursework, projects and experiences that will help you get in the subfield of robotics that you're interested in. Now, if you're not able to get an internship, I would say utilize this time to build the skills that will help you in your career in robotics. And the number one skill is coding. And when I say coding, it's not saying that I know how to write hello world and if else loop. You should really know how to code. If someone says implement an algorithm such as A star, your focus should be on what kind of heuristic I'm going to use, how I'm going to plot and visualize my algorithm. It shouldn't be on how do I write this code. So please learn and practice as much as you can so that coding comes naturally to you. So the one other element that comes into picture is data structures and algorithms. Now, when you do your internship, co-op and full-time job search in robotics, you'll be given coding challenges. This could either be take home or timed coding challenges, similar to what you will find on hacker rank and lead code. If you don't know what this is, it's essentially you're given a problem to solve in coding that may or may not be related to robotics and you have a certain amount of time to complete this task. In the time version, it's usually two coding challenges within 30 minutes and a take home, 
you probably have a little bit longer time, but there are a different set of requirements. Now for both of this, it's super essential that you know how to code well. Otherwise, you'll not be able to meet the time limit. So practice how to code and also learn data structures and algorithms. If you go on to sites like LeetCode and HackerRank, you can practice this and test yourself to figure out where you are and what you need to be learned to become better. And trust me, I cannot stress this enough. If you're not able to crack these coding challenges, you will not be able to go further into an interview process and be able to secure an internship or job. Another way to create experiences in your resume, if not internship, is doing projects. So if you have the opportunity, spend some time and build projects. This way, you can talk about what you have done in your resume. And this brings me to the next aspect to make the most of your master's in robotics in US. Prepare yourself for interviews. This means have a resume, have an elevator pitch and do mock interviews. Having a resume prepared means the moment you land in the US, you can start handing them out for your part-time job and working with professors. Next comes your elevator pitch. This is really great for career fairs. Usually there'll be one career fair per semester, depending on the university you choose for your masters. Having a prepared elevator pitch means you know what you're gonna say when you're in front of a recruiter or an engineer from a robotics company. I did a video with Shilpa Veer where she talks about how to prepare your elevator pitch. I'll include it in the cards and in the description below. Do check it out. Mock interviews means preparing for how you'll answer behavioral question, career questions, questions related to robotics, questions related to your resume, and even doing whiteboard coding challenges. There's a lot of resources for all of these things on YouTube. Make sure to prepare yourself ahead of time. So when you come for your master's in robotics, you're only focusing on doing those actions and not spending time learning on how to do those things. Now, this brings me to another very important aspect your communication skills. Depending on the country that you're coming from, English may not be your first language and you may not be comfortable communicating in English. Now, most of the communication that happens in the US happens primarily in English. Spend some time in getting better communicating in English. It will definitely make your life easier and it'll also bring a lot more confidence when you're communicating. I know it is difficult, but trust me, it will help. I wanna share a little bit of my personal life in this particular aspect. When I was in high school, I was not good at speaking in English and I was actually made fun of for this aspect. And I worked hard to improve my language and communication skills and it had a huge impact on my confidence. Had I not done that, I don't think I would have had the confidence to come on video and talk about my experiences. My goal isn't to scare you, but help you prepare better for your masters in robotics in US. So here are your action steps. Number one, try and find an internship. Number two, develop coding skills. This includes data structure and algorithms and also preparing lead code questions. Number three, Prepare for interviews. This includes having a resume and an elevator pitch. And number four, develop strong communication skills. Now, if you have multiple admission letters and you're trying to decide which university to go for, you will find this video helpful where I talk about different factors to consider when making the decision for a university in US. Before you go, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.